afternoon, everybody. Yeah, on the East Coast, good morning to the likes of Margie, Central Time. It's the 21st of October, 2022. It's a Friday. Thank God it's Friday. TGI, one of my favorite restaurants. Um, thank God it's Friday. <laughs> Looking forward to a weekend. But on Sunday, we have uh, Michael Van Flyman with us. It's going to be live as well. And I'll be honest with you, although we've got a theme, angels, we do not have a script. In other words, I'm just going to sit down with it, with Michael and we're just going to talk. We're just going to talk about experiences, about the angelic. That will be the theme, the angelic. But I haven't penciled any points or stuff like we usually do. So I'm looking forward to that. We're just going to go. <laughs> we're going to go with a wing and a prayer. But it's something that uh, Brother Lawrence mentions, and I'll bring that up a bit later. I'm just waiting for people to come on so that they don't miss it. Some people come on a little bit later, so I just want to give them time to come on, and then we'll go over to that. But our verse that we're looking at today is found in um, Song of Songs, chapter 4, verse 6. And by the way, Kimo, I did get your email, and I will reply to you, and we'll arrange your time. Um, Song of Songs, chapter 4, verse 6. I will go to the mountain top with you. Now, I'm still getting people asking me, you know, what are you reading from? What's the book you're reading from? Well, the book I'm reading from is The Divine Romance, 365 Days Meditating on the Song of Songs. And uh, the scripture uh, text that they're using, it's by Brian Simmons, and the scripture text they're using is the Passion Translation. Amen? The Passion Translation. So there we go. For those of you who may be watching this later on recording or joining us live for the very first time, that's the framework we're using. Uh, the meditation is on the Song of Songs. But along with that, I'm also using um, the Psalms. Uh, let me just have a look. I always, I always got to make sure I get the title right on this. Uh, Spurgeon and the Psalms. And it's a, if I can show it you, what it looks like. Um, I love the wide margins on this. Uh, uh, and it's very, very thin. I don't know if you can see that. Uh, Spurgeon and the Psalms. Uh, very thin paper. Good print. Plenty of margins to, to scribble your notes on. Amen? So that's what we're using, those two things today. I'm also using another, uh, just to add to the mix here, is this one. Um, and it's Prayer by uh, the Lion Collection, Prayer Collection. And it's uh, compiled by Mary Batchelor. And there's a number of, uh, I don't know whether I can show you this, but she just gives a number of quotes. Actually, I got this book for nothing. Can you believe her? I got it for nothing. There's a, sh there's a store just up the road in Bellevale Shopping Centre, and there's a charity that just gives away books. Isn't that wonderful? So, uh, so I always go to the Christian section and see what I can find, and I believe me, I've got some real jewels that I would never come across if I hadn't come across this store. Isn't God good how he provides for us? Uh, but I'm going to take some books to them, back to them. You know, I got some cookery books this morning as well. Uh, and I see you're on, Deb. I'm looking at uh, jacket potatoes and the different types of fillings that you can use using my ninja. Do you know what we should do? We should do. <laughs> we should do a cooking video. We should do a cooking video. Uh, the ingredients, you know. Um, it would be great using the ninja, but I don't know. I don't know. That's uh, it's bad enough, n not on camera. Trying it, I'm still getting to terms with the uh, ninja. But every Monday now we have stew <laughs> cooked on a slow cooker. Yeah, amen, amen. Really tastes good. Really tastes good. But I learned a, I learned something this morning. I bought these books. I don't think I've got them here. No, they're downstairs. Um, I, 
I, I, I learned something this morning about boiled potatoes. You're not supposed to boil them too long or it gets the flavour out of them. The best way is to, um, oh boy, steam them. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Anyway, this is not a, a cookery lesson. <laughs> it's a meditation on the Song of Songs. So let's go over and see who we've got with us. And um, uh, the very first one on is Margaret Hogg or Margie or Margie. Or Margie Hogg from, uh, where are you from? Broken Arrow. Yeah, Broken Arrow. Ding dong. Oklahoma. Oklahoma. <laughs> uh, Joe Costello uh, from, um, oh Lord, I always have trouble with this state. I always have trouble. It's not Philadelphia. <laughs> um, anyway, it's Lancaster County. <laughs> It's Pennsylvania, and you know how I remember that? It's because I remember the guy that was one of the founding fathers, uh, Penn. His name is Penn, P-E-N-N, Penn. Uh, Debbie Beck, evening. See, Deb, I'm just giving you a couple of cooking lessons there so that you can fatten up uh, <laughs> James. <laughs> oh, Kimo, uh, Good evening from Finland. Quite busy day. Even I didn't have a working day. Hang on, hang on. From Finland, quite busy day. Even, is that because you didn't have a work day, but it was still a busy day? Is that what you're trying to tell me, Kimo? I think that's what you're trying to say. Anyway, uh, good evening to you, Kimo. Kimo's in Finland. They are uh, two hours well, they're seven hours ahead of East Coast time. So I'll give you some idea. I think it's if it's five, it's about 7 p.m. there. Uh, Stacy, good morning from Washington State. It must be early in the morning. <laughs> good morning to you, Stacey. Uh, Carmine, uh, good afternoon, Captain John. Ahoy, she must think we're on a boat. <laughs> Oh, a ding, oh, a ding and a hong and a boing and a boing. <laughs> uh, Luan, thinking about you today, Luan. Uh, I just figured I hadn't seen you on for a couple of nights. Uh, but I know, I know, I know where I know you come on recording a lot. Uh, God bless you, uh, Luan. Uh, Debbie Beck, you don't need a cookbook for a jacket potato. <laughs> Yeah, but it's Delia, it's Delia Smith, Deb, and you get the background that you don't get on the YouTube videos, you know. Like, I never knew that. Don't boil your potatoes too long, or it takes all the, uh, it takes all the fragrance out of them. Uh, anyway, uh, Mary Costello, Facebook didn't give me a notification this was on. Oh, I wonder what went... Do you know what? Do you know what, Mary... Because I'm using um, Ecamm, that's a software in between. In the mornings I use, I go straight on the iPhone, you know, and it's a direct link to Facebook, but it limits me on using overhead and different things. Uh, and when you do that, they limit your reach. So they probably limited the reach, but you will know unless I post something on the Vinepress page, that says there will be no, um, there'll be no devotional today, like we did on Monday, for the Monday evenings anyway. Um, you'll know that I'm on at five o'clock, and maybe a minute late like today, but we'll get there. Okay, uh, Barbara, I'm still struggling trying to pronounce your middle name, Barb's, uh, and that sounds to me Swiss. Uh, good afternoon from lovely sunny Canada. The glory in the leaves this year is almost unprecedented. Glory, glory, glory. They are prophesying. That's, uh, I think, is that Psalm 19? Uh, uh, his word goes out with his display in the heavens without even speaking a word. Isn't that wonderful? Uh <laughs> <laughs> I 
I don't need lessons, and James certainly doesn't need fattening up. <laughs> I love winding her up. I love. I love to get deliverance from that. I'm always doing that. I've always done that since a kid. You know, I used to wind my mom up until she would chase me up the stairs with her shoe, <laughs> and then get into the bathroom quickly and lock the door. And as she bang on it, I would hope the door would not give in, but it didn't. <laughs> okay. Uh, good evening from Iraq, Baghdad. Now, I I can't understand. I can't read out your name, but you're welcome. Welcome from Baghdad. Um, and then we have Kathy Cruz. Have a wonderful uh, weekend. Very bad internet connection today. Now, I wonder why that, that is. And I know why it is. I think I know why it is because, and I don't touch it, but I think what's happening is I should have closed down. I've noticed my wireless. I'm on cable, but sometimes it'll switch from cable to wireless if I don't, um, you know, if I don't switch it off, but I don't want to lose the connection by trying to fiddle with it. But let me just see. Oh, no, should I, shouldn't I? Let's see. Oh, Lord, help us, help us. Uh, yeah, it's picking it up from a... Oh, boy. Um, yeah, I don't want to lose that. It's a good connection there, so I don't want to lose it, but I'm going to have to look at that. Thank you. Um, um, who was it? Kathy. Thank you, Kathy, for letting me know. Luan says, good internet connection here. Kimo. Uh, there is no can, there is no problem with your connection, John. Okay, Kimmo, uh, you are a network expert, so I will take that as a ding dong, boing, hey and a ho. Okay. Now, this morning, we I don't usually do this, but I want to go over a few things again. It's the end of the week, and I've been looking back on the week, and one of the things that has really struck me there were two things that struck me actually. Uh, into in this week's readings one was uh what was it surrendering was it surrendering uh, let me just see if i can find it uh just stick with me a minute um we will get this infused with faith uh grace uh come on john come on come on secure <laughs> strength can i find that reading embracing that was it embracing vulnerability and i i, I want to uh no I've, not, I've lost my place now um embracing vulnerability was the i'm going back to the it's not grace what what was it what was today's infused with faith oh, i didn't realize it was so far back um oh god help me here now with you i think is today's theme isn't it yeah with you is today's theme but embracing vulnerability was one of the key phrases. You know, when you look back on the week and I look back, there's certain words that really stick with me. That's one of them, embracing vulnerability. And I think one of the reasons why we like something done the same way every time is we don't want to be vulnerable. And there was a reading that I read out to you. Um, I read this reading out to you let me see if I can find it, um, by Brother Lawrence. Uh, it must have been right at the very beginning. It may have been a Monday. Uh, Accustom yourself then by degrees thus to worship him, to beg his grace, to offer him your heart from time to time in the midst of of your business, let me put it another way, in the midst of your busyness, let me put it that way, in the midst of your busyness, by degrees, in other words, take a few minutes here and a few minutes there, during your running round, uh, during your busyness, every moment if you can, do not always scrupulously confine yourself to certain rules or particular forms of devotion. 
devotions. Now, that was the two lines that really hit me. And uh, one of the things with that, and let me see if I can come back to where I was. Um, one of the things with that was because on Monday I got hit with a uh, frozen shoulder and I'm just almost fully recovered now, just almost, almost there. Um, but it just knocked me sideways. When I say knocked me sideways, I mean my routine because I was in so much pain and couldn't do stuff and it was a full day at the hospital. Um, and then this reading comes up again. And let me go back to it. Um, and it's by, we're reading ancient uh, prayers and poems. Um, this one is in 1611 to 1691. And it's by a monk called Brother Lawrence. And then it says this, Do not always scrupulously confine yourself to certain rules or particular forms of devotions. But the key is, and it's these last two lines, but act with a general confidence in God, with love and humility. Brother Lawrence, 1611 to sixteen. 91 and what he's really saying is um now i'm just trying to that's it what he's really saying is it's your trust in the lord isn't it be led by the lord and then when a storm hits you or something unexpected you know uh right out the blue that gets you unawares and knocks you sideways if you learn to be flexible, like the, like the palm trees, they go with the wind, don't they? They bend with the wind, bend with the storm. And it's really, really what, he, what he's saying is don't worship the structure. <laughs> and a lot of churches have done that. They've worshipped the program and not allowed the spirit to move. But it's the same in your person. Now, I'm one for being disciplined. I really do believe in being disciplined. I do believe that if you can, you know, meet God at the same time every day, you know, make it. And we walk with him and we talk with him. And in the busyness, we lift our hearts to him. But I do believe that preparation for your day is very important, very important. But don't make it such a rigid rule that when a storm hits you and you can't get to that, do you, do you understand what I mean, that appointment? That God is with you anyway, and just put your trust in him. And that, that for me has been, this week has been a week like that for me, uh, where I've actually had to down, down tools all week. I was wanting to put a sink in, I was wanting to do this and that, and I've just had to down tools and slept most of the week. But God can speak to you in your sleep as well. So that meant a lot to me. But so what were we saying? Uh, vulnerability. Surrender yourself to vulnerability. You know, be vulnerable. Let the Lord take you off the path sometimes. And sometimes he wants to take you off the path and show you something that you wouldn't see if you stuck to your daily routine. Does that make sense? It, again, it's that letter bait, isn't it? It's that second letter of the Hebrew alphabet, that second letter, which is the creative letter. Amen. Okay, now quickly, uh, let me go over to Psalm 13. Again, I spoke about this this morning, but I want to just re-emphasize it because I thought that Spurgeon here in his notes, and this is one of the reasons, Deb, if you're still listening, that we need to write, we need to record stuff i'll never forget being in brazil uh sitting next to a pastor that i had written a hundred and thirty odd books yeah a hundred and thirty odd books and he was only in his 50s mid 50s but he was translating mainly books you know uh from english to portuguese for the church in brazil and he turned to me and he said uh, uh john you need to record your experiences. You need to record them. You need to write your story. Every one of us need to write your story. You know, for your children, for your grandchildren. 
You never know what that book is going to do. I'm talking to myself here. I'm preaching to the choir and I'm preaching to myself. Uh, he said, you need to write. You need to, you need to put down on paper. Who was it that was um, the founder of, um, oh boy, I'm, try, I'm trying to think. It's a, it's a youth organization, YWAM. Uh, his name is on the tip of my tongue. Uh, what are you saying, June? I enjoy preparing for the day, but if plans have to change, that's okay. Yeah, not to be too rigid. Um, oh, okay. <laughs> I, 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 I'm just re right, right, I'm just reading your comments above uh, June there, Barbara, and I'll come back to that because I want to just stay in the flow of this. Um, it's important. It's important to declare it because wouldn't you wouldn't you love wouldn't you love it if your great grandma or your great great grandmother or grandfather or even your parents had written a journal that you could read when they're gone and uh, passed over you know on the other side wouldn't you be blessed about that anyway. Let's go to Psalm 13, and I'm going to use my overhead, and hopefully this will work, so bear with me. Uh, this is the, the, the book that I was telling you about, um, Spurgeon and the Psalms, and it's Psalm 13. And let's read the Psalm first, and then I just want to pick out a couple of points. Again, I repeated them. I, I did share this this morning. Um, but I felt it was so important because this is so, so important that one of the biggest mistakes Christians make is to try and run ahead with God. Uh, I think one of the biggest things is uh, uh, enemies, if you like, is impatience. And as they say, patience is a virtue. And in Psalm 13 and in verses 1 and 2, we have... Uh, four times that the psalmist mentions how long. Now, what's he talking about? He's talking about, well, let's read it. How long, O oh Lord, will you forget me forever? Question mark. How long will you hide your face from me? Question mark. How long shall I take counsel in my soul? having sorrow in my heart daily. You see that? You see the psalmist is pouring out his heart to God. And really, you know, what this is telling me is every single one of us will have days where we have sorrow or, or we go through dark times or we go through desert times. It's part of the journey. It's part of the journey and you need to prepare yourself for that. Um, having sorrow in my heart daily, how long will my enemy be exalted over me? Now, let me just show you something that I wrote in my notes in Psalm 13. Uh, the four things that he talks about here, and I'm going to just put them in pen. The first one is, how long will you forget me? In other words, ignore me. That's how he felt. He felt like God had forgotten him. And the second one was, how long will you hide your face? I'm just writing this out for you so that you can, I don't know if you can see that. The third one is, how long will you, how long will I take counsel? That's it. How long will I take counsel in my soul? In other words, have you ever had that debate within yourself? Uh, in my soul. And then the fourth one is, how long will my enemy be exalted over me? And it seems like the enemy is really coming in like a flood. And uh, I'm just writing these down. That's the key word. How long? Four times. 
four times that's mentioned. Now, what's very interesting is uh, Spurgeon in his notes, and this is what I love about this psalm, is that you've got a short commentary at the top, and then you've got the psalm, and then you've got this wide margin to write your notes out. And this is what he says, and I won't read it all because we don't have time. Uh, he says that these questions show a very intense desire for deliverance and great anguish of heart. So even David, who was a man after God's own heart, experienced anguish. And what if there is some impatience mingled therewith? In other words, part of his phrase, how long, God, how long, was he was impatient. He was wanting this to be fulfilled. How many of us have been in that position where we want it to be, for, oh, Lord, will you fulfill this promise? How long am I going to have to wait? Uh, so he says, there is some impatience mingled there with. Is not this the truer portrait of our own experience. This is Spurgeon, who incidentally had 25 years of suffering physically, physical suffering. Um, and uh, couldn't understand it. There's a book that I got again from this stone. It was the, uh, it was the letters of Spurgeon to his uh, elders when he was convalescent. Uh, and it's, it's called The Suffering Letters. Uh, is not this the truer portrait of our own experience? It is not easy to prevent desire from gener degenerating, meaning uh, turning into, you know, your desires can so easily switch and be degenerated and morph into impatience. And then he goes to say this, and this is a prayer that we should pray. Oh, for grace that while we wait on God, we may be kept from indulging a murmuring spirit. Indulging a murmuring spirit. Um, do you remember that the children of Israel were, um, that was one of the things that the children of Israel uh, I, think, I think there were thousands, weren't there, slain? Snakes came into the camp, and why? Because they were murmuring. And what were they murmuring about? They were murmuring about God's provision in the wilderness. And incidentally, when they got into the promised land, the provision stopped. The provision stopped. Very interesting that we can't go into that at the moment. But let me go back to this verse again. Uh, because I really just felt... Uh, you know, we had the four how longs in, in the beginning of Psalm 13. But I wanted to show you something. That number four, if we take the second day in Genesis chapter one, and I'm going to try and switch you over to that if I can. And God said, let there be an expanse in the midst of the waters and let it separate the waters from the waters. And God made the expanse and separated the waters that were under the waters. Now, if we look at the Hebrew in this, um, and I'm going to have to show it you on this one. Right, just bear with me, I'm switching from... switch. The word for waters in Hebrew, and in Hebrew you read from right to left, is an open uh, mem, uh, a yard, and a closed mem. Now, what's very interesting is, in Deuteronomy 29 verse 29, And I wonder whether I can turn to it. Just bear with me, uh, because I want to just I want to get this over. It's the end of the week. Just stick with me a little bit longer than usual, and uh, I, I just want to get this over if I can. Uh, reading history, Deuteronomy nine verse nine. Uh, 
And it's number three. In Deuteronomy 9, 29, verse 29, The secret things belong to the Lord our God, but the things that are revealed belong to us and to our children forever, that we may do all the words of this law. Now, here's the point I'm trying to make. There were four... Um, oops, lazy. Uh We'll get it right. There you go. In Psalm 13, there were four um, how longs. In other words, he's crying out to God, how long, Lord, how long is this going to last? Four times he says it. Now, that mem is, well, it's, its code value is 40, but if we take the zeros off, we have this two fours. One's an open mem, and one's a closed mem. In other words, there are some things we'll never understand why it takes so long or why certain prayers aren't answered. We've got to, we've got to accept that. We have to accept that we won't know everything till, till we cross over, till we get to the other side, and then things will be revealed to us. We see things as a shadow at the moment but what hit me and i'm trying to show you how the lord speaks to me in numbers here what hit me was the number four and we're talking about 40 and by the way 40 was the trial wasn't it jesus was in the desert 40 days and 40 nights there is a period that god deals with us and he tests our faith he tests your faith if he's promised you something and you get a personal prophecy, I can guarantee that one of the first things that starts to happen is everything goes the opposite way that's been prophesied. And you, God is wanting to teach your hands to war. He's wanting to teach you to be able to stand when you can't see the end result physically. Amen? And not to start murmuring. Now, we talked about it this morning. We talked about one of the things that you can do is to sing, Let, ask God to give you a song during those difficult times. So, uh, the number four is this letter here, which is the door, the Dalit. And uh, it's mentioned twice, two mems. One's a closed mem, one's an open mem. And the visual is water, which is unstable isn't it it's it's unstable it's not it's not like a like a rock or a house that you build it's 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 uh, fluid and we have to learn to go with the fluid okay when things don't seem to be working out so the four is a door but there's two of them so if i say four times four plus four is eight which is the threshold and a threshold is a crossing over from one point to another. Now, I'm trying to make this as simple as I can without confusing you, but what I'm trying to say is, usually in a transition, usually when you're crossing over, there is a period of waiting, there is a period of preparation. Use the time to prepare. Don't murmur. Don't complain. Ask the Lord for grace. Ask the Lord for grace. And how did Spurgeon put it? He said, um, um, he goes on to say this that the psalmist is talking about great anguish anguish, and what if there is some impatience mingled therewith is not this the truer portrait of our own experience it is not easy to prevent desire from degenerating into impatience and then he prays this prayer Oh, for grace, that while we wait on God, we may be kept from indulging a, mem in, indulging a murmuring spirit. Amen, amen, amen. Okay, so what is the key? What am I saying? What am I saying? What seems like a very small thing, murmuring, actually slew thousands of Israelites in the desert because they began to murmur. It allowed snakes to come in. It's very, very important. Now, you say that's Old Testament, 
But the New Testament says, the Apostle Paul says, all these things happened in the Old Testament for our example. I think it's in Corinthians. They happened for our example that it should not come upon us. Amen? Amen? Okay. I've been a bit long-winded today. I'm trying to squeeze everything into 30 minutes, and it's almost an impossibility, and I'm running late. Let's go to the reading, shall we? Uh, We must have the reading. And it says this, With you, I will go to the mountain top with you, the mountain of suffering love, and the hill of burning incense. Yes, I will be your bride. Now look at that, suffering love, burning incense. Amen. Uh, Though the road that leads to the mountaintops is long and winding, you don't have to travel it alone. The journey of life is both joyous and arduous. That's that letter bait. It's filled with many heartwarming and festive moments yet littered with obstacles of pain and sufferings. It's unpredictable, glorious, passionate, and at times difficult. Yet through it all, God is by your side. Not only by your side, he's inside of you. And he will never leave you. There are always options about which roads you can take. The comfortable and predictable or the surprising and adventurous. God is calling you higher to a life that challenges you in the most beautiful ways. He wants you to dream with him, to hope in the face of countless disappointments, to believe in miracles, to laugh even when you stumble, and to discover just how faithful He really is. Let's pray this prayer together. Lord, take my hand and don't let go. Life is unpredictable and at times scary, but the longer I walk with you, the more I realize how faithful you are. You steady and encourage me when no one else does. You're my hope, my strength, and the peace that anchors me. You breathe fresh resolve into my soul. And all the people of God said, Amen, 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 John. Amen, Amen. (laughs) We got the, we got the 10 minutes over, but what can I do? What can I do? I just had to unload this. I just had to unload it. Ding dong, boing. Hey and ho. Have a great weekend. Sunday, 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Michael Van Flyman, subject, angels. And then we're back, Lord willing, on Monday at 8 a.m. UK time, 3 a.m. for those of you that want to join me on Eastern Standard Time or midnight if you're on the West Coast uh, for our third week of these uh, devotionals. The Lord bless you, keep you, Cause his face to shine upon you and have a great weekend. Have a great and ding dong boing hey and ho weekend. And all the people of God said shing boing. <laughs>